My name is Sean Bowman. I'm a product manager for ultrasonic sensors at Parapon Fuchs. Today, we will be walking through the USI safety ultrasonic system, and I will be covering a basic overview on the parameterization software. Within this, I will be covering the basic parameter settings, some of the diagnostics for troubleshooting, and also setting up the device for basic use. And we will also walk through the release test to getting the device able to be used for applications. Before we move on, I would like to state that this video and this video series will only be used as a basic guide for using the device. For detailed information, please reference the user documentation available in the comment section or off the Peplum Fuchs website. The first thing you'll want to do when getting started will be to go to the Peplum Fuchs product page, look up USI, and go to this USI safety evaluation unit. And I'll direct you to the software tab and download the software for programming the device. When you open up the programming software for the first time, you will notice just an offline mode, a level one, and a level two password mode. For level one, uh, this is really only for people who may need to take a look at the parameters that have been set to the device, or also be able to view the diagnostics, or in other words, view the echo signal that the transducer in the system is evaluating. For level two, you're able to also see the same information, but you're able to make changes to the parameters. So as this will be my first time logging into this particular device, I will enter in the default password into level two, which is prep one Fuchs two. And the passwords for level one and level two, the defaults can be found in the user manual, also available on the prep one Fuchs website. Since it's the first time I'm prompted with another window to change the level one and level two password. So for the demonstration, I'll just change it to something easy for both. And once that is changed successfully, you are then automatically guided into the basic parameter window. Through the basic tab of the USI safety programming software, I'll first direct your attention here to transducer one. I must note that I am only working with one transducer for this demonstration. If I did have a second transducer, um, the information would be displayed at the bottom and I would need to go into the extras tab and log on to that second transducer. But again, for my purposes, I'm only using one transducer, so this top half is all we'll need to worry about. I will now draw your eyes to this rough image that shows the current representation of your protection and warning fields. The default currently, when you plug in a new device, will be to have both the protection or safe field and warning or non-safe field set to the same thing at two meters. For my purposes, I want to set the warning field to 75 centimeters and the protection field to 50 centimeters. And you can notice here that you now show a very distinct separation between a protection field and a warning field. And I will write that to the device. Just make sure that if you change any parameters at any point, you want to write them to the device just so everything is, is known by the device and you don't have to backtrack. I now draw your attention to the protection field range. Uh, the default is set to normal. This is the normal elliptic sound beam that we have in the, the drawings and also within our 3D models of the, the sensor. If we were to select expanded, what this does is it extends our safety field to a potential 2.5 meters instead of just two meters. But I do wanna say some words of caution that if this is selected, you wanna make sure that any objects entering the transducer field is coming as close to the reference axis as possible. Uh, meaning you don't want an object that's coming at an angle or something that's coming directly from the side of the device if you're using this expanded field range. Um, so I will keep this at normal for now and I will move down to the middle section where we can select our signal outputs. Um, we can either have normally closed or normally open and we can also have a power on restart interlock um, either with protection field test which is the default or without the protection field test. What the protection field test is or what it means is that with every power cycle, the USI safety automatically starts an internal system test. It initializes the sensors or the ultrasonic transducers and then waits for the protection field test. This does not require the, the programming software if it's selected. It's just written to the device and the device knows to do it anytime power cycle. And I will cover the protection field test at a later stage. The last thing to take note of is the restart delay. Um, currently, in, it is set to the default at zero, 
What this is, is if you have a restart delay, what that delay is, is from the time an object leaves the field, the protection or warning field of the device for the OSSDs to return to their, their default status. Um, and that's all that really is. So before moving on, again, I will write the parameters to the device, just make sure everything is uploaded as I want it. And then I will direct you into the diagnostics window. So here we are within the diagnostics tab of these programming software. Now I think this is probably the most, if not one of the most important aspects to the programming software for the simple fact that it lets you see what the sensor is seeing. You can change your parameters, you can power up, power off, power on a device and have it for some reason not be working and you really just want to know what's going on, you'll want to go here to the diagnostics tab. Once you're in here, you'll want to click on your fixed echo. And what this does is it allows you to view the echo signals on the oscillogram here. And if an object enters the field, now I will stick my hand in front of the sensor. It will also read out the detected distances in the numerical display on the right side of the, the program screen. It also displays the reference image. It shows the difference to a, a reference image if, if one has been taught. You can carry out a renewed teach-in of the signal and you can also display and hide individual curves. So it is a very, very powerful aspect to the programming software. There's also the potential to teach in reference points. Now I will click the teach reference selection of the oscillogram. I'll go to fixed echo and I will place something in front of the sensor and I will hold it here. And now I can go into the teach in. So what I'm doing now is I'm teaching in the reference object. It could be a safety pole. It could be some other static object that you should expect to be in the field if you're monitoring an area. And so now the object is still there, which is good. Now, if I remove the object, we get a distance reading at where the object was or where the anomaly happened, which the object was at around 33 centimeters originally. And now that it is gone, we're getting an output on the sensor and it's giving us an output for that distance that an anomaly occurred. So I will go back to just the regular echo oscillogram and I will reteach to the sensor. And then we will proceed to our release test. So now we find ourselves at another very important aspect of the USI safety ultrasonic program. This being the release test. Um, the release test is required for two main cases, one being during the first commissioning of the device and the second being after any parameter writing to the device. It comprises the functions performed during a teach-in, determining the transducer data, and also checking the protection field. In order to test the protection field, you'll need a, a suitable test specimen, which you can see laid out in documentation available on the website. The release test is only possible at the login level two. In order to carry out the release test, you'll go here to the release tab and you'll want to click on start release. And while doing this, you'll want to make sure that the field is the same as what you've taught during the diagnostics and that the parameters align up to what, what you wish. Once the teach in box and the determination transducer data boxes are checked and you get a green bar here for transducer one, you will want to insert your test specimen which in my case is just my hand in front of the sensor. And you'll want to slowly approach the transducer until you fully validate the release process. Once you get a check mark here and not an X, you'll go over to the acknowledge tab and you will click on the acknowledgement. And this is where you will enter your name, the type of application and the test specimen used during the release process in the following three windows. So once these have been done, the parameterization software will use the information to automatically produce a protocol with your information, as well as the most important parameters. The LEDs on the physical device of the evaluation unit will switch from red to green, and the warning LED will no longer be illuminated. Once you have your protocol, you can click on print protocol or save protocol uh, just to sign and archive uh, the protocol. Once that's done, the USI safety is ready to monitor the set areas. In this series, I've covered some of the basic parameters for the USI safety device. We've walked through some of the troubleshooting using the diagnostics window, and we've also walked through the release test for getting the device usable for applications. If you have any questions at any point, please feel free to reach out to Peppermont Fuchs at one of our many channels. 
If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.